In today's Community Focus, we are joined live in studio by Rhode Island Attorney General Peter Narona. He joins us once a month here on 12 News at 4. Thanks for being here. Sure, Kim. Good to be with you. So there's always a lot to talk about with you. I want to start with some news of the day. Your office is taking a local car dealer to court, alleging unfair price practices designed to mislead and confuse consumers. Yeah. Can you sort of summarize the allegations here? Yeah, well, to take a step back really briefly, we fought for two years to get our consumer protection law uh, improved uh, and enhanced. We're using that now to protect Rhode Islanders. So this is a complaint uh, filed against two uh, auto dealers, Greco Toyota and Greco Honda, where we allege, and they're allegations at this point, we have to prove them in court, but what we allege is, is that in the way that they advertise, that they're misleading consumers um, in one way. Um, they're stating a price online, and yet when um, a consumer goes to buy the car or calls up and asks for what the real price is, it's a $5,000 um, addendum fee. Mm -hmm. uh, that's unlawful in our view. Um, and then the other instance, they're advertising cars at wholesale prices. And again, we allege that that violates the law as well. So we're using our better consumer protection statute to help Rhode Islanders. That's why we sought to have it passed, and we'll see how this case turns out in the end. How pervasive of a problem is this? Any sense of how many people were impacted by this particular instance? Yeah, we're, we're still looking at that, uh, Kim. You know, what I hope to do is accomplish a couple of things to make sure. Um, that if we are able to establish what we believe we can establish, that this uh, entity will stop doing what they're doing, that people who have been taken advantage of will get restitution, and then other car dealers that may be thinking about doing this won't do it. Mm. Uh, another big story out of your office recently, uh, you have asked the courts to halt the sale of National Grid's gas and electric operations to a company called PPL. You've cited some concerns you have over potential uh, rate hikes to, yeah. uh, to rate payers. That transaction has now been delayed until at least May. So what reassurances are you looking for here? You know, look, I think, you know, it's, that's a very complex matter, and there are a lot of angles to it. The first thing that we're concerned about is that the standard that the regulator, the DPUC hearing officer, used is so minimal that uh, going forward in particular, transactions could be approved without any showing of what we believe the real standard is, is that services won't be diminished and that the new entity uh, or that the transaction will be in the public's interest. So that has to be the standard or Rhode Islanders lose. Uh, in the context of this transaction, look, that's in litigation. We'll see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. But in the context of this, this litigation, we are concerned about a number of things. First of all, we don't have the information to really judge whether it will be in the public's interest or not, or whether to make sure that it won't be diminished. And so if you don't have the information, it's hard to judge. But what are we concerned about? A couple of things. Rates going up. Uh, storm uh, responsiveness going down, and then of course we believe that uh, not only does the new uh, uh, the new utility and the DPUC have to take into account the Act on Climate Goals, and that simply wasn't done here. All right, we'll keep our eyes on that one for sure. On the topic of energy, a different kind of energy cost. We were just hearing from our colleague Matt Paddock. Prices yep. at the pump. Certainly, a lot of us have sticker shock. Um, your office, as we've been discussing, oversees consumer protection, mm -hmm. price gouging. Is gasoline price gouging a concern, and what should people be looking out for? Yeah, look, I think when you talk about price gouging, you have to first understand what's the state of the market mm -hmm. locally. So, you know, gas is going up, it appears, because of world conditions. And look, there may be some sort of uh, nationwide action that either the AGs as a group or the federal government might take against oil companies if they're kind of collectively driving up prices. But when you talk about price gouging, say, in the context of Rhode Island, what you're looking for is what's the baseline of the market. Now, the market as a whole is going up, and so what you're looking for in that context is what are the outliers. So let's say gas goes to pick a number, five dollars a gallon, and there's a gas station that's charging six dollars a gallon. It's an unconscionable price given what the state of the market is. And so what I'd ask Rhode Islanders to do, we know it's going up, but if you see real outliers, to you know, to get a hold of our office so that we can look into it. Um, Target 12 has learned that Rhode Island State Police Colonel James Manny could be mm. stepping down from his post soon, and, and they've learned he could become the town manager in South Kingstown. You two often work closely together. Have you spoken to him about this? Yeah, look, I don't, I don't want to share any news the colonel may have. Let me just say this. He's been a valued law enforcement partner for me for a very, very long time. I have enormous respect for him. He's given great service to the state, um, and I've, I've enjoyed really working with him on, frankly, some of the issues that matter most to the people of the state and, and the most to me in my office. Another headline I want to get to today before we let you go. A Boroughville man, we just mentioned him as well, Ronald Andruchuk, who investigators say had more than 200 yeah. weapons inside of his home. He's going to remain behind bars. A federal judge called the number of guns in his home mind boggling, but he also pointed to the fact that there is currently no law in place yeah. to cap the number of weapons that someone can have. 
Should there be? Yeah, look, you know, that's that's not a question for me to answer here today. You know, what, what I think the concern is always, the way I look at, at um, gun laws is this. Are we keeping out of the, them out of the hands of the people that would do us harm? You know, there are lots of collectors uh, that keep a lot of guns and don't cause anybody harm. And then there are, you know, one gun in the hand of somebody that can cause uh, tremendous harm. And of course, when you put both things together, lots of guns and somebody who is a real concern, obviously the firepower makes a difference. But again, I think what we need to do in law enforcement is, is understand the laws that we have and use those tools to make sure that those who would harm, you know, adults, children, uh, don't have an opportunity to do so. Rhode Island Attorney General Peter Narona, thank you as always for your time. Thanks, Kim. Good to be with you. And looking ahead to tomorrow when we will be joined by Shannon Gilkey, the Commissioner of Rhode Island's post secondary education. He will talk about the search for a new president for Rhode Island College and more. That's coming up in tomorrow's Community Focus.